In this video, we will take a look at the software management APIs for version 3 or Smart Photo. Before getting started, please make sure you have watched the two Getting Started with ThingSpace APIs videos that can be found on the ThingSpace documentation and tutorials page. There are three versions of the software management APIs. Version 1, OMADM and Lightweight M2M Photo Service. Version 2, HTTP Photo Service. And version 3, Lightweight M2M Photo Service with Network Awareness. If you have a Lightweight M2M device, we highly recommend the use of the software management version 3 APIs. Key benefits include monitoring for reachability, and when creating firmware update campaigns, you can choose the start and end dates as well as time windows. Other key features include, ThingSpace will continually perform retries throughout the campaign window. You will be provided with real-time per device campaign status callbacks so you can monitor the campaign. You are provided with co-location awareness. If there are a cluster of devices in the same cell, this service will orchestrate micro campaigns to cohorts of devices to reduce photo failures, possibly due to network overload. At Verizon, we work closely with our IoT module partners to certify those modules on our network. Cellular IoT devices certified on our network have a baseband or modem component and an application or device component. Baseband is often referred to as firmware. Application software may be referred to as software or firmware. In this video, we may use them interchangeably, but pay attention to the API calls, which will mostly be firmware. Baseband firmware is responsible for network establishment and management. Application firmware is responsible for the logic that would control an IoT machine, for example. And now, let's take a look at some of the version 3 software management APIs. Everything that I will be showing you in this video can be found on the ThingSpace documentation page at thingspace.verizon.com documentation APIs Software Management. To begin, you will need to make your first two API calls requesting your access and session tokens. Please watch the ThingSpace Development Series video, Acquiring ThingSpace API Access and Session Tokens, if you need assistance. Your next API call will be to get a list of available firmware on your account. The only requirements for this call will be to add your account number and protocol, in this case Lightweight M2M, to the URL endpoint. In the response, you can see that this account has three available firmwares. Information provided will be the firmware name, the firmware from and to versions, the launch date, and the make and model of the module to be updated. Get a list of devices on your account. The only requirements for this call will be to add your account number and protocol, in this case Lightweight M2M, to the URL endpoint. The response will return an array of all devices in the specified account. Each device object contains information needed to manage device firmware, including the device ID, device make and model. If the device is photo eligible, meaning that the device has successfully bootstrapped to the lightweight M2M server and reported firmware eligible to be upgraded, and if there are licenses already assigned, get a photo subscription. The only requirement for this call is to add your account number to the URL endpoint. In the response, we can see that we have a total license count of 1,000 and a total license used count of 13. Assign a license to your devices. The account number is required in the URL endpoint. In the body section, list the device or devices that you would like to assign a license to. The response will display the following information. 
the account name and the device ID. You will also see the status, which in this case is License Assign Success. Schedule a firmware upgrade. There are two requirements for this call. First, enter your account number in the URL endpoint. Next, in the body section, enter the required information, including the device ID, the campaign name, the firmware name, the firmware from and to versions, the start and end date for the campaign, and the campaign start and end date. We recommend a scheduled end date of about seven days after the start date so we can retry through the end date. The maximum campaign date would be up to 30 days. Also, for best results, a time window is not recommended. In the response, you will be provided with the following information. Most important is the status. In this case, campaign request pending. You can check the status at any time by using this next API. Get the campaign level status. There are two requirements for this call, both being in the URL endpoint, account number and the campaign ID. As you can see in the response, we have one campaign showing a scheduled status. Now, let's discuss the campaign lifecycle flow for lightweight M2M devices using the version 3 resource path. Once the user schedules a campaign request, the campaign changes to request pending status. After passing parameter checks, the campaign typically moves to queued status. The system will then perform network checks on the devices. Once the network checks are complete, the campaign moves to a pre-scheduled status. ThingSpace will then create sub-campaigns if necessary. Once the sub-campaigns are created, it moves to a scheduled status. The campaign will stay in a scheduled status during the device update. Once the campaign end date has been reached, or if all eligible devices have been upgraded, the campaign status moves to ended. Get a device status in a campaign. There are two requirements for this call, both being in the URL endpoint, account number, and the campaign ID that you received from your previous call. As you can see in the response, we have one device showing a pending status. Submitting the API call at a later time, we can now see that the device was successfully upgraded. Please be sure to check out the ThingSpace documentation page to see more available APIs.